This is too far back. Yeah, oh, let's get oh, there, oh, there he is. Hi, Drew. <laughs> well, you look especially tousled this way. Oh, Jesus, Drew. Can I, can I just get out of a, a dryer? <laughs> can I ask, how many minutes have you been awake? <laughs> That's when you get the truth out of him, like, so it's just, really? I, I drink a lot. <laughs> okay. Oh, but Jonathan, you left your phone upstairs. No, I know. I keep trying to get somebody to steal it. Yeah. And also Thank someone you. else has, I think Tara has your phone, Drew, or something. It's a whole phone. She confiscated it. Yeah, that was wise. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd have been running up long distance charges on a deck phone somehow. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to the management Q. Okay, good. Welcome to the management Q and A. We're a mess. <laughs> yeah, this is how just how all management meetings are, pretty much. In case you're thinking we're a well-oiled machine, we have a microphone down here in this corner that you can come to if you have mobility issues. Just raise your hand, and we'll make sure we can get the mic to you. Uh, we are here to answer any and all questions you have that we have the ability to answer for you. So go go right ahead, get up, get right up on the mic when you uh, when you speak. Hello, good morning. Morning. Um, uh -huh. I seem to notice there aren't really any sponsors this year. Uh, I was wondering if that was a choice or a circumstance, and other than swag, what do sponsors do? <laughs> It's, it's more, more choice than circumstance. So there's so much going on, and really, until the last month or two, we didn't know solidly what we would and wouldn't be able to do. And just the logistics chain, an organization that goes into lining up sponsors is complicated, it, it, especially if we're having swag. Part of it also was um, an overall reduction of stuff. We probably noticed there's less paper, not just from us, but also from the ship that um, we want to have less physical stuff. So but we do expect uh, to find a way to do it since, fingers crossed, things will be closer to what we think of as normal for 2023 and we'll be able to work with the sponsors in more directly again. And in, in answer to the question, what do sponsors do, they sponsor. Uh, <laughs> so practically speaking, uh, over the course of Joko Cruise, some, have, some provide swag, you know, free giveaway stuff, some provide some degree of support for different types of events on board. Um, and it, it sort of runs the gamut of, you know, sort of general sponsorship. So we've never quite gone the route of naming venues according to a sponsor. Who knows, maybe we will at some point. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sort of a variety of support, things like that. And it's evolved over the years. So when we were smaller, like we had uh, sponsors that would help us do practical things. So we're, we're gonna revisit that for 2023. Do you have something yeah. you'd like to sponsor? <laughs> uh, this is about uh, the Palm Storm song, the one is canal. <laughs> okay. It's going to be a niche question. That's fine. I'm all for it. Well, uh, I've been living there for almost 40 years. And uh, uh, as of late, it's been called Lavender Lake. I have been, and uh, in the past, I've been calling it the Deadpool. Reactions, please. <laughs> yeah. So this is in reference to... Uh, there's a show called Thrilling Adventure Hour that we've done work for. That's a live radio, uh, live performance event that we did for a number of years. Uh, and for a New York performance, Paul F. Tompkins found this set of lyrics from a newspaper, a New York newspaper in 1896 or something called the Gowanus Canal that we set to music. And it kind of became a... To be clear, the Gowanus Canal still exists and is still a polluted... Horrible. <laughs> Sometimes a poor animal gets in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's just, it's it's just a, ter a, a terrible body of water in Brooklyn, and it's a super fun site. Yeah. 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 And we wrote this. We wrote this annoyingly catchy music for it, and it became kind of the theme for whenever Throne Adventure performed in New York. We would sing that song. Uh, and we are, you know, we are wholly unsurprised that it remains as awful. Place. But in light of this new information, we may need some rewriting. Hey. Sorry, okay. Go. <laughs> uh, yes, go ahead. Next question. 
I was wondering if you had any updates on whether we were turning to the right timeline this time. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, yeah, we have to check. Unfortunately, we don't know what the portal looks like until we actually start to pass through it. Uh, we can, uh, it's not fully random. We can, we can uh, put our thumbs on the scales. Hopefully we'll get back to the right timeline. You know, we'll, we'll do our best. Yeah. Hi, this question is for Paul and Storm. Are you guys ever planning on doing a Da Vinci's Notebook reunion? Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a very Paul and Storm centric yeah, yeah, so far. Yeah. I like this. Uh, there's nothing planned on. Da Vinci's Notebook is the acapella group that Storm and I were members of for about 12 years in the late 90s and through the two, early 2000s. Um, we are still friends and friendly with the other guys in the group. Uh, we live in different places. I live outside of Philadelphia. The other guys live around the D.C. area. And Storm now lives in West Virginia. Uh, so it's hard to get together much. There's nothing on the books about a uh, Da Vinci's Notebook reunion. Certainly no, no, no sort of tour or anything like that. But never say never. Uh, as I say, you know, we're all still friendly and, and you know, older and losing our collective hair. But, but uh, you know, that, that's... There's nothing like seeing four 50-year-old guys go out in a tour van for 12 days, right? <laughs> um, yeah, no, we're not, it's, it's not like we're against the idea, but we, we don't have any active plans for it. But we, you know, we, we've done every so often, like we've done a Paul Storm show or two in the DC area where the other guys showed up and we did a song and it was wobbly but fun. So, silly one. Theoretically, how much would naming rights for the Explorers round stage be? <laughs> One million dollars. <laughs> so, it's a complicated question, actually, because you have to pay us for the naming rights for the stage, but you also have to pay Lincoln Center for the rights to not name the Lincoln Center stage. Or the, it's complicated. We're actually we're not even supposed to say Lincoln Center. Stage. We're not. Well, no, we're just not refer supposed to refer to it as a venue for our events. Like, seriously, we can't, and we ask, well, can we call it Schlinken Center State? We did want Schlinken Center State, and we pushed hard for it. No. They, didn't, they didn't like that either. More, more seriously, uh, some time, some event that, through this whole process that you guys just went, holy heck, you think it's going to work. Like, something you didn't think was going to actually happen or work. Didn't. The cruise. The whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Every year, we're always amazed. <laughs> I mean, I was terrified up until the last swap, and there were a lot of swaps. <laughs> oh, oh, we're good. Yeah. Um, are you guys ever going to go back to the West Coast? Maybe. Um, yeah, this was. For those uh, who are newer, the first year, 2017, we're a full ship charter. We wanted to do the land concert, and there's the town of Loretto uh, in the yeah. California. And it was wonderful. And it's, it's the sort of thing we're like, yeah, it, it, some year it will make sense to do that. Um, not next year, but we'll see. Yeah, it's, and there's, there's a complicated calculus involved with it because it, they have to have the proper size or class ship sailing in that area during our timeline. Um, and also, I'll take this opportunity to talk a little bit. You know, how many of you were around for any of our land concerts in the past? They were super fun, and all went well for the most part. And even when they were a disaster, they still ended up going great. Hey, come all is well. But as we, as we have mentioned at, at other management Q and A's, uh, we, we got very spoiled very early by the Loretto concert, uh, and. Each year we realized how, frankly, dumb it was to say, let's throw a one-day fest music festival on land that we're never actually there to produce in until the country. day. In a foreign country. In, in the middle of a cruise. In, yes. an out, in an outdoor venue subject to rain. Yes. In a new foreign country every year with that, different requirements. Right. And different that, none of us are, to. Yeah, that none of us are on site for until the morning of the event. Um, and truthfully speaking, the expense got greater and greater and greater for the land concert. Uh, and 
not like nobody came, but we have the numbers. Fewer people were attending, and the intention for the land concert in, in the beginning was always because we'd moved to a, a larger group that couldn't do anything all together on the ship, people had said it was important to try and have one of those events where everybody could be together again, and that was, it worked that way for Loretto the first year or two, but attendance has gone down for the land concert uh, such that, you know, we have to weigh, like, the, log the, and the logistics are extreme for the land concert as well. You know, working through those logistics and the expense for the number of people who are showing up for it and just the, you know, the, the value of it, not just monetarily, but, but for everyone. As such, one of the things that we are very seriously considering, we're not officially committing to this yet, but for 2023, uh, we are talking about putting a stage out on the back CU pool deck. We've seen how the Blues Cruise in November, when you may have seen us posting about being on a cruise in November, we went on the Blues Cruise for a few days to see how they do it, and it's actually a very interesting setup. It, it produced, it set, there's a lot of opportunities for programming that we don't always take advantage of here for you know, bands and, and sort of louder music. And it's just cool to, to be out on the deck and there's music happening and there's the bar and everybody's hanging out and it's beautiful. And, 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 and so you can throw land scale size events and land scale size acts without being subject to all of the headache and worry of a land concert being subject to one day's weather possibly ruining everything. And because we're going to plan it ahead of time, it's really cool. Like We're actually going to be able to plan the itinerary so we can go slower at times, like they have a, a concert speed that they can sail at, so and you don't have to worry And that's much. actually part of the reason that the third port is to be announced right now for 2023, is sort of working on the calculus of ports we may or may not be able to get, and shorter runs versus longer runs in speed, so that it, we're not just being coy, or, or we haven't just like, oops, we forgot to book a third port, it's, <laughs> it's part of all that. You know, they hopefully all the information will be coming soon, but we're actually, you know, we, we know there's some trade-offs also. Part of, if we put a deck on the backstage, one of the things they have to do is they cover that back pool. They're, they put a metal frame underneath and they cover it with, you know, a plywood or, or a, a nice kel 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 solid, yeah, with, kel <laughs> with a solid wood top so that people can stand safely in that area as well. But, um, you know, we're, we're, we're very excited about the possibilities involved with it programming-wise, so, um, you know, we'll, we'll have some information in our post-cruise survey as well regarding that to get a sense of how, whether you know, people are interested in that as well. But it's certainly, it's absolutely something we're interested in, in seeing for the evolution of the cruise. Oh. It does, it is fun. Thank you for saying it sounds fun. That's one vote. <laughs> and I just wanted to say that that cruise we went on in November was really fun. And it's, its full name, if you want to Google it, is the Legendary Rhythm and Blues Cruise. Recommended, especially if you enjoy blues music. Most mostly that. Because most there's a lot. Do not go if you don't like blues yeah. music. <laughs> Quite a lot of blues. Next question. Can I have a note saying that I've been on a very educational trip, so then I'm going to You uh, absolutely. absolutely. You, write, you write the note for me and I will sign it. <laughs> Whatever you want to say. Actually, genuinely, um, contact the info, our info desk and ask them to remind us and get word to us about that. We will. We can totally do that. We will absolutely, any, any of you, whether or not you're in school, we will write a note saying you've been on an educational cruise. <laughs> oh, check it, yes. Happy UK. Get right up on the mic. There you go. On Half Moon K, there's a show event from upbuilding sandcastles. So I have a question. It's a hypothetical question. Okay. Hypothetically, if someone brought a kit which hypothetically could be built into a toy catapult <laughs> and destroy said sandcastles with permission, <laughs> under a supervision, uh -huh. and then hypothetically could be broken down and brought back on the boat, would that be acceptable? Uh, so, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, as, as long as it doesn't, it certainly it should not involve driving piles into the sand for reinforcement. <laughs> I, I'm guessing this is relating to, there is a, a Holland America FAQ about uh, prohibited items, yeah. which, is, catapults which includes list. catapults. Actually, <laughs> yeah, the catapult is literally, literally listed, and I have now been informed that in... England, as well as maybe some other European countries, a catapult actually is their term for a slingshot. 
Ah. So I would say, um, just if, if it's something that will not put other people in danger, and the fact that we never heard you say this, <laughs> yeah, it should be fine. The fact that we don't know about it, that's what, yeah. We're, we're yeah, because we're only talking hypothetically here. So yeah, yeah. It's hypothetical. And I mean, yeah, and that said, you know, it, if the Holland America staff on site requests that you break it down, we will defer to them. But yeah, we've not got your back. Yeah. <laughs> I know this person. Never seen, never seen them before. Yeah, they, they when they X-ray the luggage that's coming onto the ship, anything that looks like sir, this looks like parts for a catapult. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for some other stuff, but mostly it's catapults and. Uh... Um, is it possible to like have some kind of way to sign up so that your room only gets one copy of? It's an interesting logistical yeah. question, yeah. Drew? Uh, <laughs> with money, anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's, a, I think that's an excellent yeah. point. Uh, and, yeah. do you, and you mean because there's only one person in the room, or because, like, there are two people, but you still just want to waste the paper? And, yeah, I, that's, a, that's a reasonable request. Uh, you know, during this voyage, you, you could probably ask your stateroom steward to change that. Um, but in the future, yeah, we can look at, we've, we've wanted to look at, you know, potentially opting out of swag and other things. And, you know, there, there's a lot of check boxes and other Yeah, yeah boxes you know, we, we, uh, we have uh, been trying to reduce our physical footprint and the paper, the paper is one of those things. And it's hard because some people really do you know, people get their, and this is one of the things we look at in the survey, people get their information about what's happening in various ways. Some people are like, I never look at the paper, I just have SCED. And other people are like, I never look at SCED, I just need the paper. So it's hard, it's hard to know. And, but you're right, I mean, to have that extra layer of granularity, we would say, yeah. I want only one, I want one for each person, or I want none. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just a question of the logistics, and that's... Uh, yeah, and there, there's logistics on the, the Hallen, certainly, as far as the room stewards knowing, you know, if it's possible for them to know, like, just put one copy here for this room, but two but copies. But that's, that's a great suggestion. But yeah, and, and that's a great thing to put in. It's some, something we will definitely talk about anyway, but uh, when you fill out your post-cruise survey, yes. please be sure yes. to put that yeah, in. Put it in your mind, please. Very, yeah. very helpful. Yeah, and just as a general rule, especially for those of you new, again, we have a pretty, uh, not ridiculously long, but an involved post-cruise survey. It is extremely important to us. We get lots of valuable information from you. It's how we find out your opinions about uh, all of these events, other than just people tweeting at us, which feels great, but it's sort of ephemeral. Um, so please take the time and respond as completely and honestly as you can to to that, if, you know, we value it greatly. We read every single comment. We, we have lengthy meetings about all of the, the things discussed in there. So please uh, do take the time, if uh, if you can, to complete that post please. Okay. Uh, first, uh, thank you for picking San Juan for 2023. Uh, and you addressed a little bit of this, but uh, can you tell me a little more about the process that you're going through to pick the third port? to be announced, and you, I know you mentioned with the, uh, the inboard concerts, which I'm totally on board with. Uh, <laughs> yes. But, uh, you know. Um, uh, there, there is, I love to use the word complicated, words complicated calculus. There is a thorough calculus both on our part and things that go on with the cruise line that we are only vaguely aware of, including things like fuel consumption and how fast they can go, what ports the ship is allowed in or not. Um, and so part of it is trying to find the right itinerary that gets us new and interesting places to visit. You know, because we also, you know, we don't want to just go back to the same three or four ports, uh, even as much as we love them all. So we're trying to trying to find something that includes some variety. Will the timing will work so that we arrive and depart at a time that makes sense with our programming? Uh, the aforementioned, you know, whether we are able, you know, allowed to go to a certain port or not, depending on timing or who owns the port. There's all sorts of weird politics that we never have to deal with, but we just make requests regarding that. So uh, we have several possibilities. We just haven't, you know, gotten the go ahead on, say, our preferred one or our second preferred one. But hopefully, we should find out within like, the next few weeks. 
And kind of the very basic formula is um, an awesome beach stop, and because we have Half Moon Key, like that's the best beach in the Caribbean. And then San Juan is you know, a place you can walk around, it has history. So the third one is, is will be a hybrid, and there are actually two ports that it's down to at this point. Yeah. And we're not being coy, we just literally can't say yet because we don't want to promise one that suddenly it's not that, and some might have really wanted the other one, or some might have wanted the first, and if we abandon it, then that'd be sad, so. It's secret until it's not secret. Could you talk a bit about the decision to move uh, the guy whose name is on the cruise from the main concert to a late night concert? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the question was uh, regarding uh, having just had Jonathan's concert, from the band concert, be just a, a one-off onboard concert as opposed to a main concert event uh, for you know early and late show. Uh, I've been talking a lot. I don't have to continue talking even though this is the program we're on here. Okay. Uh, this is... <laughs> I'm interested to hear the answer as well. <laughs> so this is another one that's in a couple of parts. Um, one of the things we are looking into programming-wise for the future, not necessarily immediately for 2023, is um, looking into the options of a, a somewhat more festival-style setup, which is to say that a, a lot of other festival-style cruises, they don't have the same show twice in a night for the early and late dinner. For like their big headliners, they will have, say, two or three performances in the main theater, maybe one on Monday, maybe one on Thursday, or one performance in the main theater, then another one on the back deck stage, or things like that. And then the other acts will have two or three or four performances uh, throughout the week. Um, and last night was a little bit of an experiment to see based on the numbers that we knew had attended the land concert in 2020 for Jonathan's concert especially, it seemed like it, it would that this room would support the number of people who wanted to come to that show. We were hoping that it didn't overwhelm, you know, there were, at least looking at the room, there were a number of open seats and that we weren't seeing tons of people getting turned away at the door or anything like that. Now I also understand some people just may not have been comfortable uh, coming to a room that crowded, yeah. or to a show that late, or to a show yeah, that late, and we understand. And we, and as I say, we we also knew that might have been the case, and we didn't want to upset anyone. But also, Jonathan has multiple performances during the week, so if we were going to do that with one act, we figured that was the easiest one to try. And you know, again, we apologize for those of you who couldn't, for whatever reason, come to the show last night, and we're disappointed about that. It was, it, you know, we weren't trying to mess with anyone, but we wanted to see how that structure worked a little bit. And, and also, we, oh, sorry. And we also got to, you know, the, the, the schedule itself with the two shows and the some ports are late and some, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a Tetris, a bit of a game of Tetris. Uh, and we kind of got close to the end of that game of Tetris. And I was kind of like, well, we can't really, if we do this, that's going to, if we put me in this slot, it's going to mess up this thing. So it was just, that was another reason that we were like, let's try, let's try it out this way and see how that works. And there will be an opportunity in the survey about this and other things, as mentioned, uh, to, to give us feedback about that. Yeah. I loved it. Oh, oh good, thank you. <laughs> Kate loved it. I, uh, I have a complaint, and it is a minor complaint, and it's for Hal, not for you guys specifically, and that was around excursions. Between the cluster that was the, uh, the website, and um, how few events there were. That the, the couple of things that I would like to have done, by the time I got on, they were gone. I got waitlisted and nothing ever happened with that. And that was kind of disappointing. It would have been nice to, even to know that, yeah, we're not gonna be able to put any other um, lecturers on, you know, on, we're not gonna be able to do additional events, but it was just, it's like the first time I haven't been able to do any excursions during one yeah. of these things. And I kind of would really like to, especially in a new place like St. Croix. Yeah, I, I believe that there are some feedback forms that uh, you could get from the front desk on the ship where you could share that feedback with Holland America. But okay. I, will, I will also say that this year, especially, one thing that we've seen is that, you know, when you get an email from Holland America about your booking, it's an email that says, please see the attached PDF for the message. And then the attached PDF says, please go to our website to see <laughs> an update about your booking. 
Um, which probably made a lot more sense when they were uh, faxing those PDFs out to the travel agents to make the bookings. Um, but they have had to completely re-architect their check-in process. And, and you know, okay, I don't, I do not like how broken that website has has been, and it's not, it's not only been broken now, but they have had to rebuild so many parts of their system to accommodate the global changes. Um, and we saw that the shore excursion launch process this year was a lot more hectic and that there was less, there were fewer people who were available to assist. And we're really sorry we didn't want it to be that way, but also I, I do think it's going to get back to the level it was at in terms of usability before soon. <laughs> and, they, and they know it, of course, yes. uh, yeah. and that we all, we all want there to be the opportunities and, and part of it's ports too. So the ports that we're going to be going to next year, um, we have a more developed, uh, more developed short excursion programs too. And we want to lease the town was close to exactly yes, port, right, right. which wasn't and the case. That was absolutely part of our decision for that. And also, every place is experiencing the same staffing issues and COVID restrictions that we all have been. And I, you know, I, I remember seeing when they sent us the list of what excursions were going to be available. Like they they knew and they wanted to be able to offer additional timings for excursions and stuff. And I think it's as much as anything for some cases it's, they don't have the staff to extend that. So we, but well, we understand your frustration. Yeah, and just, absolutely. just knowing that. Yeah, would help. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like if I'm not going to hear from them, okay. You know, yeah, I agree. And I, I encourage you to to uh, give the feedback directly to okay. Hal because they, um, one thing that I can say about them is they're really great at responding to feedback. And you, you might even get a plate of chocolate covered strawberries out of it. I'm not going to promise that's a good point. Yeah, but I can't eat that stuff. So oh, well, there you go. <laughs> well, you might want to mention on your feedback form which, which <laughs> sorts of which food which treats you like. <laughs> oh, by the way, love oatmeal cookies. <laughs> but I'm sorry, I'm sorry that that happened, and I, to I totally hear you, and it, it is just a part of the, you know, everybody's kind of struggling to keep every, keep the wheels the wheels on it. Yeah, the fact, the fact that this happened at all was you know, kind of a minor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. The fact that there were screw ups at various stages, like, yeah, okay. Right, right, right. Yeah. But it doesn't make it any less frustrating. No, I hear you. Yeah. I so thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah. And I mean, I, I will just share one more thing, kind of like generally about planning this year is that uh, it, when you're working with a cruise line, it's very easy to see it as a monolith and where there is no excuse for any fuck up. And where everything should be oh, so I know I said that. But where and where everything should be working perfectly, and where everything has a process, and um, over the course of building our partnership with Holland America Line and seeing this happen, and then working through the pandemic with them, with all of the changes and all of the rescheduling of other sailings, the cancellation of our site inspection sailing, um, you know. You just you just start you, you start to see that there it really is a bunch of people who are all working as hard as they can to like hold back the tide and keep the thing going at all and, and we we are very grateful to them that they have made this possible and that they have helped to smooth things out not just on the guest side but also they have been partners to us in, in helping us figure out how to make this workable in a com an era that it's impossible to plan for. Yeah. We uh, we usually have what's called a site inspection cruise about a month before this cruise where a number of our staff and ourselves sail on board for a week on the ship. We meet the specific department heads who will be on board for our event. We talk through our entire, uh, it's a whole lengthy, hundred some page memo uh, with multiple sections. And this year, our site inspection cruise got canceled the day before we were supposed to sail on it. Literally, as the lift was coming to pick me up to go to the yeah, site inspection, yeah, I got, I got the call. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's usually where we get we go through all of the logistics of our event. And we had, and it's it's super helpful to do it on site because you can just see things and go, oh, right, that too, and you just talk to people immediately. So we ended up having to sort of kludge together over a series of conference calls, and then Drew and uh, one or two other of our our staff uh, sailed last week. Uh, drew at least for a few days to sort of do a hurried, finished version of that, and we could not have been happier with the way the the staff, all the staff, but these the department heads this year just 
we're ready to go, absolutely immediately responsive to all our various requests, and have done a phenomenal job, especially without, I, I'm, I'm amazed we accomplished it without a site inspection this year. Yeah. And it went better than most, some of our cruises that have had site inspection. So we, again, give it up for that half time. And, and also give it up for the, the people shore side at HAL who have helped us as things have been rescheduled. We have a uh, charter representative now that's on here. And then there's also one person, Linda, who inputs we can import your names automatically into the system the first time that we submit the manifest, and any time the manifest changes after that, Linda needs to change it. Manual. Um, Manual. Uh, so, yeah, let's just give a thank you to Linda. Linda. Yeah, Linda. Hi there. Uh, this is my first Joko cruise, so forgive me if this has been asked before. Um, but uh, dining in the dining room, I was wondering if it is possible to play Joko Cruz <laughs> uh, music instead of Muzak. So uh, we do a number of playlists. The first year we attempted to do the dining music. We're like, yeah, let's do the soundtracks for like Lord of the Rings and Batman, and we did. It was really weird. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, and I do the playlists, and it's, it's uh, time intensive to find uh, a mix of things to last that long. Because if you only do an hour, like by day two, you're like, oh my god, this song yeah. again. So maybe, maybe we'll have another swing at it and see if we can do it. But we don't want to freak people out with the scariest parts of music that have stings and you're putting your soup, I'm having soup and all of a sudden, whoop, yeah. and That was our, our main takeaway from trying to do the playlist ourselves was like, oh my God, we need so many hours of music to make it not feel repetitive. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it does, it does make sense that you would just take all the albums of all the performers and put it on it. But then you would hear the same song like ten times within three days and be like, this stinks. But we <laughs> are going to do it on, throughout the ship you'll hear, uh, there are playlists that are playing yeah, that we mix yeah. in stuff that's special for us. Yeah. It's not a bad suggestion. I, it, it, sometimes it, I guess maybe it can be a little weird, uh, certainly for Jonathan, if like he's walking around the ship and all he hears is his own songs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is, this is a weird event in general. Fair enough. So, <laughs> That's the least of my work. But it is a fair suggestion. We can try to, certainly at the very least, try to mix in some more of the artists on board into our playlist. Well, we do that, but for the dining room. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have another go. And again, I mean, I think the other takeaway we had was that just uh, Caesar salad's a little different when the Bridge of Khazab Doom is playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little dramatic and harder to digest. Yeah. Eat, you fools. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been doing this for a number of years now. How do you keep the magic alive? <laughs> I feel like to mix it up with the yeah, pandemic yeah. every once in a while. You gotta, yeah. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta schedule a date night yeah. every yeah. so often, rediscover each other. And you know, honest communication is really, is really what it's about. That's, That's actually, actually true. true. Honest communication. Yeah. Yeah. We actually do. Like, we have uh, every week, almost every week, we have a management call and a staff call and that. Yeah, it's constantly evolving. And we have a lot of uh, regular business meetings, but there are also meetings that we have that are emotional and about our relationships. I mean, it's <laughs> like... <true. laughs> well, just, just got this one. Oh, cool. yeah. oh, well, I didn't want to cut anyone off, but... Uh, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the process. You're seeing it. You're seeing it. Um, a, a, friend, a friend of mine who is also involved in a small business years ago recommended this book called The Partnership Charter, um, which is not about... Uh, <laughs> Partnerships that charter cruise ships, um, but it's about it's about a document that that partner partnerships are notoriously fragile and and often in uh, litigation, um, and this is about a kind of process. Of, it's a sort of corporate process where everyone writes down their feelings and their needs in a structured way. So not only do we have a fifty-page memo that we send to the ship, we have a fifty-page feelings memo <laughs> that we send an update to each other on an annual basis. We did a Myers-Briggs <laughs> to do our corporate, well, it's not really corporate, but the partnership chart. Yeah. But we, I mean, we marvel about this regularly. I mean, we, you know, we still genuinely get excited about this event every single year. I don't think we, I mean, we, we could still do it. I don't know if we would want to still do it if we lost that excitement, but we marvel regularly at how well we all get along I mean, we certainly have disagreements. Sometimes they are heated. I don't believe we've ever had any genuine fights in 10 years, 11 years of cruises. Uh, and everyone sort of naturally fell into certain slots of, of the different uh, partnership jobs. And it's worked great for us. So 
we wish we could have some magic formula for it beyond just we, we did genuinely try to stay open and honest with each other and say things that, you know, not hold back feelings that we're feeling when we have disagreements or feel wrong. And, and moreover, the, this, this event is really important to us and we love it. And, and we, we draw a lot of uh, energy and satisfaction from it from doing it, from putting it together, from having fun, from coming up with like dumb things that we could do with this cruise ship that is our toy, and, um, and uh, you know, just watching it develop over the years. I mean, it's a really rewarding thing for us, uh, and so it makes all the rest of it worth it. it people, to feel fresh. People ask us throughout the week, like, how are you doing? And yeah, of course we're tired, they're long days and it's a long week, but it is Great. so fulfilling. <laughs> just walking around, I, I spend, Numerous hours just walking around the ship, seeing people have a good time, and then just think like, wow, we put this together, we let people, we make this happen for people, and that's, it feels great to be able to do that, because not everybody can. And every year it's, it's the same thing, like it's lists and, and busy and all of that, and it's all that first day when you see people on the ship yeah. that it comes alive. And yeah, it's, it's kind of a business, it's kind of an art project. There are... <laughs> I think this year Paul has been fed spiritually by the elevator rugs. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we spend an inordinate amount of time writing and choosing the elevator rugs. And, and there is something there is something kind of fun. I mean there's like a three page section of one document that is just the elevator rug changing schedule. Oh yeah. And there's a precision. Yeah, there's an elevator rug like cleaning pan plan, packing plan, they have skews. And they're not cheap. <laughs> and we will tell you because you're here first, but there will be another new set of elevator rugs for 2023. So. so uh first question. Um would you please, please, please station somebody in a stateroom with the TV during the simulcast and all the air on and all that, because couldn't hear anything on uh, the couple that we tried. Um, you couldn't hear anything at all, or? No, no, no. I had to have my ear like under the TV to make out anything during the first That's fair. Have other people experienced that as well? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. We'll work on that. Which, yeah. can, can you remember which shows they were? Worst first. Uh, worst first was the, the big one. We okay. We gave up after that. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. thank you for the note. Please mention it in your post cruise survey, and we are very sorry that you uh, didn't have that opportunity to see it. Because we are, every year we try to, we're still working to improve the, the audio on the simulcast uh, specifically because we know more people are trying to take advantage of it, especially this year. So we, are, we, are continu we will continue to actively work to improve yeah, it. Sorry about that. Yeah. The TV. Yeah, so the TV volume itself is just low, is that what you're saying? Oh, okay. Uh, so maybe we need to uh, well, as ask your stateroom steward if it's possible, if there's a setting that can be changed on your TV, it could be. We'll, we'll ask on our end as oh, well. We will. But we'll also, next time we're doing a simulcast thing, I'll make sure that somebody is watching the TV in the stateroom. In we'll your stateroom. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we'll, we'll have somebody look at the television and we'll close the loop and make sure that it sounds the way it's supposed to sound so yeah. we can track down the problem. Thank maybe, you for letting Maybe one of the readings, and also uh, another thing that I just thought of, if you're switching out the rugs from time to time, auction the old ones. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. We wanted to actually we've talked about so, making little coasters that are the elevator rugs. Yeah. We found a whole new revenue stream. <laughs> Non-fungible rugs. <laughs> and I have a question that is Drew centric, which is, Drew, in all this time of prison, what is the silliest moment you've experienced <laughs> in all the cruises? Whoa. Okay. <laughs> you count the cake. <laughs> The one the cake last night. No, no, the the, the Anna cake. Oh, the yeah, the birthday cake. Okay, yeah, I I think that that our, I think that that was kind of it. So, um, Anna, who has worked for the cruise uh, since about 2013, and who was unable to be here this year for family reasons, but we are very excited to have her back. 
Um, it was her birthday on one of our site inspections when we were coming to check out the ship. Um, and we saw, we ended up seeing in like our section of the dining room this birthday ritual that the crew does for itself in the dining room. And it involves cake and milk and more milk. <laughs> And all of those things end up on, on the dining steward whose birthday it is. <laughs> so over the course of the week, um, we were all talking and, and we, and so I'm kind of Anna's direct supervisor. Um, and, and we have had, especially back then, we worked, we were working really hard. This is maybe 2017, 2018. Yeah, there, was right? some, there was some friction. Right? There was, there was, was a, a rough year for him. It was a, yeah, yeah. I mean, just, you know, yeah. We were, you know, we, we travel on site for like a month before the event and they're up real late and everything. And so we, Paul or Storm, I think Storm, it was you, Storm, I think, yeah. decided that the thing Anna probably would enjoy most for her birthday was that if that, if that birthday cake ritual were done to me um, in the classroom <laughs> in And. <laughs> It was kind of like a whole Gallagher concert in miniature. Andrew she was so happy. <laughs> she literally bounced in her chair. I've never seen her so delighted. Screaming. She. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was. It was love. <laughs> I, I agreed to do it so long as Storm gave me his pants. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty you shook hands on it and he wore it. One of those weird rumple stilt skin deals. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was that was beautiful. I'd say a lot of, a lot of my memories of silly things are just with the with the ship's crew because they get so into it and have so much fun. Um, I don't know, we had an executive housekeeper in the 2020 voyage who had a totally shaved head and he made another head out of googly eyes and mustaches and on the back of his head. <laughs> Um, and you know, these are professional people and they walk up to you and just really want to show you their googly eye head thing <laughs> and it's like, oh, I love you, Gunter. <laughs> I changed my question on the way up here because I wanted to talk about our relationship a little bit. Um, well, let me get the charter, the partnership charter. <laughs> and we'll... Oh, am I on that? Um, no, but seriously, you guys seem to do a really great job of like being able to be off on your own and then interacting with people, and that may just be the magic of being performers or whatever. But does that balance feel good for you guys? How are we doing, and and how do you manage all that? Yeah, I mean, it's great. I mean, it's one of the things that uh, you know when we're when we're booking performers on this cruise who don't know this community, who don't know this, you know, the, sometimes the first response you get is like, oh, oh my gosh, to be stuck on a cruise ship with all of my fans, that sounds terrible, which <laughs> is kind of a funny, funny thing to say. But um, um, there, people do have a fear sometimes that they're going to be, be here and be mobbed and never be left alone, and it's just not like that. And I always have to explain, really try to convince them that the culture is such that it doesn't really work that way, and it um, everybody's doing great. I mean, it's it's you know I uh, I think everybody has a pretty good sense of of when when it's okay to come up to somebody and when when it's not. And it's it's also I think there's the the fact that we're all together on this ship for a week. You know, people get excited and, and maybe want want to make sure they get an autograph on the first day or whatever. But then it's like. You know, the tenth time you see any man waiting in line at the gluten-free station <laughs> at the Lido, you're like, "Hi, Amy," and then it's like, it's totally normalized. So in that in that way, it's for me, it's a more like uh, enriching and satisfying uh, set of interactions because it's not it's not this like I'm at the merch table and there's a line of people waiting. And we only have thirty seconds to try to do this thing. It's a much more relaxed and spread out. Interaction, which is why I really, I really love it. I get to, I get to sort of be, and I think a lot of the performers feel this way. They get to be among this community and not just in front of it. You know, it's really nice. And also, and um, these are healthy. That's true. <laughs> and I know um, in prior years, like we, we all wore a lot of hats and we're doing a lot of the work. And um, this is a shout out to Drew that over these years, particularly across COVID, where we had this whole extra year, uh, you don't see it. But Drew, with a team of people, um, overhauled everything on the back end to the point that this is the first year where we all feel truly relaxed and knowing that there's an incredibly competent bunch of people getting things done. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for being
do that. But great. Here in between, uh, released Joko Cruise 95, and it's been working great so far. <laughs> Solid OS. <laughs> well, thanks. I mean, I, I, yeah, this last night when Tara took my phone was the first time ever, ever, that I've been without one of those on these things since 2012. So yeah. that was pretty cool. Remind me to tell you about several emergencies that came up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, this, the ship sunk, by the way. We handled it. Can we record this? Is that okay? Oh, sure, sure. Awesome. Okay, so my question is, uh, it's okay. Okay, so Ron Watkins. Come up a little closer to the microphone. Okay, so Ron Watkins, the founder of QAnon, explicitly, explicitly used Code Monkey as his username and said your song was the inspiration. Would he be allowed to book a cabin? And does trying to overthrow the government violate code of conduct? <laughs> That's a great question. I don't know if uh, attempts at overthrowing governments are explicitly called out in our code of conduct. We could just depend on why they were I would say it violates the be excellent to each other. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. A, that's the point. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I saw that his name, his uh, Twitter name was CodeMonkeyZ, uh, and I was like, oh, that's weird. And then I watched the documentary, and when he when he said, yeah, my name comes from a song, this song on the internet that was popular in the, in the aughts, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> you know, it does not give me any great pleasure to know that I contributed in any way to that person's whole thing. Not, not into, to be clear, not into the whole QAnon thing, me personally. Yeah, you are on film right now. So. Yes, no, I know. I, now I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, uh, I'm totally gonna get uh, doxxed and then I'm gonna get swatted, right? <laughs> no, they, they dox, first they dox you, then they swat you. Come and get me, Ron Watkins! <laughs> oh, camera was off. Oh, good, good, that just I kind of perfect. We always wonder what question we won't see coming. <laughs> good morning. I've been hearing about the Joku Cruise for years now from a friend of mine, and I invite myself since my first cruise with y'all. Welcome. And I'll do the post cruise survey, and I've had nothing but nice things to, I mean, like, hands down, incredible. Um, my question is, is, is there a way that I can get like a five or a ten minute tour where the captain navigates the ship? Oh, yeah, the bridge tour. They, uh, unfortunately, due to COVID, restrictions they've eliminated all ship tours they used to offer limited tours for a fee of the um the engine room and the sort of the underworkings of the ship i don't i think it's been quite some time since they've offered the bridge tour either way but certainly since covid unfortunately even even for us cool people we don't get to go see the bridge anymore um uh, but they but they i have a feeling that once COVID loosens up, they'll go back to doing the tours of the other parts of the ship. Because, it, I mean, it is kind of amazing. In some ways, the bridge is the least interesting place. The bridge is like this very open, empty space with a lot of computers and a bunch of guys just kind of sitting around drinking coffee. It's a very... And one pirate. <laughs> it's one pirate. It, it's part of maritime law. There's one pirate that has to be on the bridge at all times. But, but the, I mean, obviously, you know, when you think about what it, what it takes to actually do this, I'm always amazed that they put food on the table that comes so fast and is as good as it is for so many people every night in several different venues. And that's just the food. And then you think of all the all the water handling and the electricity and the AC and the uh, laundry. laundry and the w waste waste management. It's and just like it's crazy. And we see the space efficiency that goes into doing it because there is not a, a square inch of the ship that they do not want to use to its maximum. And then every Saturday they turn it all over in about three hours. That's right. So yeah, I, it, it, you know, if you do come back, I, I, I hope that you have those other tours and I hope you take them because it's, it is super cool to go and see how some of this stuff works. Because there's a whole, there's a whole like secret half of the ship that we don't see. It's like Disneyland, behind the, behind the fences is the, all the stuff that makes it go. It's really pretty cool. Yeah, as soon as you exit the like carpeted part of the ship, you just remember, oh, I'm in a giant steel box <laughs> that is full of people running around as fast as they can to like make 
a special dessert. <laughs> yeah. In the past, I've gone on cruises with my dad, and he's a seaman, so uh, my dad would say, "Come on, go this way," and yeah. he'd sneak through. Yeah. Run through, you know, we run it to somebody, and then next thing you know, we're getting a tour of the kind of sea. Yeah. For for the record, don't just go through any door that says "crew" on it, <laughs> even if you think it's the quicker way to be the kids. You have a lot of cameras. <laughs> that, that's the door to the brink. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We got about five minutes or so uh, left, so we're gonna after this third question here. Unless there's anyone, is there anyone with mobility issues that had wanted to ask a question but can't come down to the microphone? Please raise your hand, and we'll keep an eye out for you. But otherwise, go right ahead. Nice shirt. <laughs> uh, once the ship sails, are you guys all on 24/7, or do you have some kind of a like, do you have a decompression space? Some place where you can go and you know talk about all of us behind our backs. <laughs> <laughs> there is there is a performer sort of, well, like at, like at any con there is a performer and and staff there are performer and staff spaces uh, ex exclusive for them where people can go to not be on and to you know, relax a little bit or have a, a snack or what have you uh, or rehearse or work or yeah, or, yeah yeah it's three decks below this deck. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually uh, lifeboat number twelve. Yeah. You know what? It's uh, yeah. We do, we definitely have have time that is not not on, and uh, you know, in particular sometimes when we bring our 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 families, it's you know, it's we. Uh, it is hard to find that balance. There's some days that are bus busier than others, but you know, it's like we have we have meetings uh, every morning where we uh, we get together with our staff, and then we have a meeting where we get together with the ship staff and go over any issues daily, first thing in the morning, and then uh, a couple of meetings throughout the day for various of our staff, and then, you know, the events that we attend as, uh, as part of the performer side of things, I think there are spaces in between. So yeah, we do have, we do have plenty of time. And, and as Jonathan said earlier, because it's more sort of a spread out, relaxed, inter general interaction, like it, it's, uh, it's, it's very fulfilling and enjoyable to sit at a signing table and have people come at, at you and sign things and have, but it is, it is a bit draining because the, uh, those things you really want to come through for a person, you have this limited time, so it can take a lot out of you to sit at a signing table for two or three hours, whereas on the ship, it's just we're walking by, hey, how are you, just a quick hi, it's, it's, it's more comfortable, I think, so it's, it's not, you know, we're on whenever we're out and about the ship, but it is not draining, certainly not in, in that sense of, of, you know, people just sort of having a need from you at all the times. Hi. I was wondering if you could shine a light on uh, what it was like for you all when you realized 2021 wasn't going to happen, and then what it was like the moment you realized 2020 might actually happen. It was a relief when, when 2021, the word came out, because we knew it a while before it was official. And the, uh, above it all, like we all decided early on, if we can't do it safely and know that it can happen, we don't want to do it. So, um, and a and quick, quick shout out to everyone for being so great with the masking indoors. Yeah, being in that elevator and knowing everybody's just wearing their mask over their nose and mouth is yeah. great. And thank, thank you, thank you all for just rolling with everything over the over the course of the last two years. I know it's been hard to. I mean, as we have struggled with not knowing what's going to happen, it's very hard to run an event and communicate in a clear way to everybody when you yourself don't know exactly how things are going to be. So I really appreciate everyone's patience, and it's why we're so grateful that you're all here. Especially like, during January, where we're like, we just need to wait and see what happens <laughs> in the next month. And Brian, believe us, it was as frustrating for us as it, we were sure it was for all of you, but... It worked out. Yeah. And Holland America has been an amazing, amazing partner through this and seeing how they came to grips with it early on. Uh, it's difficult, uh, but more than, and we've seen it from the inside uh, every week and constantly and still that they know that they have to nail it. Um, and if they don't, more than any, literally any other industry in the world, that if they don't get it right, then they're gone. And they took that to heart. And um, I think that, that it showed. So thank you to them as well. I wanted to thank you guys for how the port side COVID stuff was handled. I don't know how much you were involved in logistics versus how doing that, but that was so smooth and well oiled, and it was just so comforting to know that that was all there. Thank you. That was thank you. Yeah. That was 
The, the internal testing, uh, they don't normally do that for retail sailings. It is an option that they offered to charters during this period of COVID. And even when it wasn't necessary, there was a time it was necessary and then there was a time it was optional. But we knew even when it was optional, it, you know, we wanted the peace of mind and we knew it would give everyone attending the peace of mind as well. Uh, and it, it's, not re it's not revealing specific information to say that it is our understanding that nobody was turned away at the, at the for any reason. I have another question for you. So it's pretty clear from watching you guys go through this every year in the Q&A that this is an insane consumer of your life's energy. And I'm curious as to what impact that has for the rest of the year, and particularly that energy that's not available for the music. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, you know, boy, these last two years have been so different. It's very hard to remember what it was like uh, before that. Um, you know, I would say that, uh, uh, you know, it is a ton of work over the course of a year. And obviously, there are only so many hours in a year. So it's, you know, just in a very basic sense, it certainly does take away from that. But, um, uh, you know, my. I would just speak personally. My my ability to uh, be creative has really not been around these last two years. It has been a very difficult time emotionally, uh, and so it's just for whatever reason I you know I, I sit down with the guitar and I'm like oof, what? <laughs> it kind of feels like what's the point a lot of the time, um, and I hope that that changes, and I hope that. Uh, you know, it's part of the reason I was so excited to come back to this event is when it really does feel like, oh, this is a piece of the old world that went away for all that time, and the fact that it's coming back is very, very meaningful to me, uh, and just personally. So, uh, all that to say is that, uh, you know, the lack of, the lack of touring and new music, uh, for me, personally, over the last couple of years, has less to do with uh, the cruise and a lot more to do with the uh, pandemic and the Trump years and the uh, potential World War III and all of the other all of the other terrible things that have been happening in the world, but um, uh, but you know, I, 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 as I said, I hope that I hope that we're turning some kind of corner soon. Well, and, and I'll say that from from my perspective, that's a very like in my life, that's a very like pre-pandemic way of thinking about it. Like, what's the toll that the cruise takes? But being back here. Uh, after the two years, it's like, well, the, what the cruise also really, I think, feeds us. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, it's amazing to be here. It's it's so exciting. Um, you know, how often do you go to a party where, it's like, you know, it's kind of it's kind of like everyone gathering around a giant bonfire and a few hundred thousand dollars get thrown on every day, and you just. <laughs> I, I don't amazing. know where this metaphor is going. <laughs> well, that's the whole thing. Okay. It's it's just really cool and it's fun and it's it's great to be here and uh, you know uh, yeah I, I've been trying I've been trying to be more more positive about about this and to get the pieces that are too much yeah, yeah, we change that when the audiences are there again and we can come back to them the music will come back too but this Absolutely. does feel like a first step uh, that, thank you that is all the time that we have we thank you all for coming on the cruise we thank you for coming to this event and. Have a great rest of your cruise. We'll see you on the ship. Thanks, everybody.